Hello and welcome to my channel where we do our tutorials and I don't then just spend like two hours sprinkling on foundation. For some reason somebody had messed with my camera settings so I just spent half an hour trying to set those and prompts spent half the battery. Let's get started! Where is my tape? On my desk every single time. So, a bit of a worth of our supplies today I have a 15 by 15 centimeters sheet of Canson Imagine 350 grams mixed media paper. The reason uh, is the only loose sheet paper I have in my house. But it's amazing paper. It's what I use throughout my channel for the first couple of years. It's like 2 euro for a 50 by 70 centimeter sheet so it's very cheap and it's good quality paper like all of my first um paintings on my channel that i did until i moved to sketchbooks were on this paper and it can take on a very good beating i have my masking tape from the hardware store just the cheapest one you can find i recently did some house renovation so i just went to buy like paint for my walls and i picked up whatever was the cheapest so i tape about half a centimeter on each side of this paper because we won't be using a paintbrush for this we will be using a spray ball which i cannot pick up right now because i'm taping the tape to my arm and that's a little hack if you have not watched my art hack video that will prevent your tape from ruining your paper from ripping off the fibers once you're done with your painting it's always a good idea to tape it down when you'll be using a lot of water like we for this tutorial so if you're going to be painting something very simple like when I do my flowers when there is barely any water then you can obviously skip this but we need it for this one I can already bet it's going to leak through the tape anyway but yeah, it's better to take some precautions. And speaking of precautions, make sure you have something to protect your table, your desk, unless you don't mind ruining it. Mine is already covered in paint, so I don't really care. And on the side note, you can obviously use any watercolor, mi heavy mixed media paper you have in your house. This is just what I have. And this is what we will be painting again. Yeah, I know, a galaxy. How unpredictable. I'm just gonna leave this on top of my dresser. I should have got another chair right here to build the laptop so I can see it. Okay, I'm gonna start with daily blue, which is the most vivid blue I know of. And we have like this little circle that's off center. So you're just gonna make a random circle that is off center and then fill it in with blue make it like a little sphere like you ever watch those how to color tutorials like with shading and basic graphite we're going for something like that you know just make a ball and then do some shading And it has more color on this side and less on right here. So we do that. It's almost like a heart. Sort of like blue. You saw that picture? Okay, then some random scribbles. Good enough. Then we have a lot of oranges, yellows, oops and earthy tones which is surprising so i prepare some cad yellow and dark chrome yellow yes that's correct and i'm going to trace randomly the shapes that i see so i don't always have to turn my head around 
we have a bright yellow spot right here and yes yellow and blue is the main green which is so okay we're painting a galaxy it has every color you can think of then i'm going to start filling in those random shapes with my dark chrome yellow right then a bit here then what is this yellow ochre burnt ochre close enough obviously you use any shades you have in your set normal yellow bright orange light brown whatever you have you don't need the exact names but if you are interested there will be uh, links to all of the supplies i have used down in the description box below like i do for all of my tutorials i really want to add some of this venetian red which is going to be one of my favorite colors like it's the perfect rusty red with slight hints of brown and orange and it's very beautiful and then there's like this wave i don't know what to call it i didn't really study physics at school to know like the proper names of the parts of a nebula but there are like these little waves coming around from space so i'm just trying to mimic that this is basically a mad person sketch like you know how sometimes in movies they have like those pictures i'm not sure what they're called and they ask you what do you see here these are those pictures okay ish there's a lot of red going around right about here then i go back to my baby blue and there's like a slight blue greenish wave coming around from this big pile right here I can probably get one of my five-year-old nieces or nephews to do this with me. This is actually a great project considering most people are summer, summer break or like they have break of work or something like that. At least in Europe, like mid-August, everyone stops work. So it would be a fun project to do with like little kids or people that don't have a great ton of experience in art. I just take some black and apply on the sides on the angles, but it's a very nice project to do. You don't need any skill level of art, any background, it's very easy. And you don't need a crazy ton of supplies either. Like I said, the paper, like a sheet this big was two bucks. The only reason I switched to sketchbooks is for convenience, but all of the papers I use, like my Animula sketchbook, the gray one, or the Dorshon, which is my favorite, Canson, every brand, even Fabriano Cotton, Cotton? I can brown stuff, but yeah, they all come in loose sheets that are much cheaper than a pad or a sketchbook, and you can cut them yourself, and it's a great way to uh, save up on some cash by the way i'm adding black to the center of this blue sphere and i'm gonna outline it over that blue wave just outline the sphere with some black that way it's gonna look more defined it's gonna have a nice edge you don't want big white areas of the paper showing through because it's going to look bad once you activate it it's going to look white it's barely going to have any color over it and we want this to be very dark because it's going to be a night sky it's going to be a galaxy i know galaxy and nebulas are not the same thing but i just use them as synonyms for the sake of convenience this is getting madder and madder with every second like a bit to 
get to know each other, but on a personal level, I spent last autumn in therapy and there's nothing shameful about it. And my therapist actually wanted to see my uh, YouTube channel and I gave it to her. And if she sees this, like, Jesus, I, I'm probably gonna get a lot of phone calls or text messages. So I'm gonna want to darken this up slightly because I, like I said you want this to have a lot of color you want it very saturated because we're gonna add a lot of water and when you add a lot of water then it dries up very very bright and I don't want to do extra layers I'm not sure this paper will handle extra layers so I'm just trying to do a very thick base one Go right in the edges where the paper um, meets with the tape. It's really hard to get in those little nooks and crannies. But if you cover them properly, it's going to look very nicely. And if you skip over them, then you're going to get a white bloom into your painting cans. Eh. So just try to focus on that as much as you can. And then I fill any gaps in the middle of the painting with my lightest uh, blue, which is the only blue, which is stable blue. I should probably sharpen this, but I'm not sure where my sharpener is. Yeah, hold on. Perfect. Can we appreciate that? A fun thing I discovered is if you go to your pencil manufacturer website and like go to see the product that you have, like for Fabric Style and go to Fabric Style's website, you search Albert Dura Watercolor Pencils and they actually tell you which is the best sharpener you can use for your pencils, which actually helps tremendously. What works best because these are a bit thicker than your normal uh, pencils. They're a couple of millimeters thicker because the actual core has more, uh, well, it's not lead, it's watercolors, but the core, the amount of color you get is uh, much more than regular pencils. So they don't really fit and sharpen well in normal sharpeners. Okay. I'm gonna add a bit more of the Venetian red, just to cover any gaps, focusing it mostly on the edges, a bit on the inside. Hopefully, this looks nice. If not, I'm gonna film a landscape. And some yellow. Okay. Now, for the moment of truth, I want to go straight onto the blue, like straight in the center, that way it diffuses, it spreads into the black, hopefully. Make sure you have napkins or toilet paper or paper towels, because I don't have any. Thinking in advance is not a talent that I have. Yes, this is toilet paper. So straight in the middle, I think three to four pumps should do it. One, two, three. <coughs> Why are you betraying me? Sorry. I'm gonna just move this around with my finger. Now I'm gonna pick up the black, why is it overpowering the blue? I have no idea. I'm gonna pick up some of the black that went over the yellows and that uh, Venetian red. Something, it's looking good. Well, at least in person it is. I want a nice crisp edge right here. I'm gonna pick some of this up. 
it's gonna try much much lighter than this keep it in mind I'm gonna take off all the paint and water from the tape yeah see it's already leaked beneath that's not a problem but you should try that's it it's gonna help later on when you take the tape off and you're just gonna make your life a bit easier trust me on that I have my trash bin right there I actually crumple the paper so I get nice effects it creates more depth in this way and a bit in here Okay, I want the yellows to be a bit lighter. I think that's gonna dry very nicely, hopefully. This is a lot of gambit, you know, it's like playing Russian roulette, I'm not sure what you call it in English, but it's here or miss and you never know how it's gonna turn out. Like, you can trust me on that one. Now, the best thing you can do is leave this to air dry. No hair dryers, no heat guns. It needs to air dry. What this does is uh, all of the water and the pigment are gonna sink in uh, slowly, naturally, bit by bit into the paper and it's gonna dry up uh, flat. It's gonna dry up even. If you were to use a hair dryer, it's gonna start from, for example, here. This is gonna dry, it's gonna create edges, it's gonna look patchy. Chances are chances are it's gonna look bad please don't do it just go make yourself a snack while it tries i'm just gonna go cook some lunch right now bye like literally take a snack it's gonna take time welcome back now as you can see it does look crazy i'm gonna try erase off the harsh lines you see over the blue and we can work with the rest if my voice is a bit lower I'm so full, you have no idea. I'm just waiting for the seals to shut up. But yeah, I have like three dishes, I'm made in two sides, I'm full. Oh, by the way, this is an eraser pencil, not a pencil eraser that, er that erases pencil markings. This is an eraser pencil which erases anything and everything. It erases watercolor, watercolor pencils. It's a great nifty tool. I don't know why more people won't use these. They're not like crazy expensive. Well, on Amazon they are, but everything on Amazon is expensive. Maybe because this is like, you get the stuff imported from Europe and it has extra tags and that's why it's more pricey on Amazon.com. But I'm pretty sure the ones by fabric sell like to euros and this is by Stadler, it's the same exact product and I've had these since 2014, 15 maybe I actually like that it has like a little hard shape is it just me? now we have a number of options and let me talk you through all of them you can use either opaque uh, watercolors, opaque not your normal not your normal ones and the reason is these are going to show up on the black background. Normal watercolor and watercolor pencils are transparent, so they're just going to not be there. You could use gouache or acrylic, which is what I'm going to do, because these last very long, they're very useful, very handy. I just put it in my pencil case, nothing extra. Or you can use a white marker, which is very easy as well, but this one is dried up. It's only Posca, they're very nice by the way. And this is like a fine liner. They actually make fine liners, that's awesome. And for the wash, again, we have a number of options. I could use this little eraser pencil that has like a brush ending to clean up the dust once you're done erasing. You know, erasing makes dust. Or, since we said this was gonna be a no watercolor brush, no brush tutorial, a no toothbrush, which has a hair from me. Yeah, I have long hair. This is what I'm gonna use. Old toothbrush. You probably have one you use to clean your bathroom. If you don't want to ruin the nice one you use for your teeth. Do not use the brush you use for painting for your teeth. No. So I'm just opening this. I'm gonna spray some more on the cap. You could go and use like the sink. 
but we don't do that here. Make a little puddle, like just a tiny amount of water. Stick this in, hopefully, yeah. Rub it in, mix it like pancake batter. It should be runny, but not too much. Now, uh, place your finger like this and flick, and that's gonna create this. Oh my, this is hardened. Those are nice stars. You could obviously also use a paintbrush for this, but make sure it's a hard bristle one. Not your soft little watercolor brushes. You need a hard bristle, like synthetic nylon strong bristle brush. That's beautiful. I didn't know I had it in me. Um, toilet paper, where are you? I'm gonna take actually the white. Like I said, it's transparent, but I just need the dip to make like little stars. So you're gonna see. Basically find a bigger splatter and make like a cross. Sorry, I thought I don't Hammer would make like a little star and you could also use a toothpick for this or like, I don't know, a bobby pin. Like that. A little tiny one right here where my hand's shaking because I have shaky arms. And like maybe I'm shooting star right here, just make the back thicker. I'm actually gonna add another one because I really like that one. Find bigger splatters that you've made and just go like that. Maybe I don't know. I'm actually gonna dip my pencil in this mix. And like make a big yeah, big one right here. Make it a bit more round, please, and thank you. And then drag it back. You can barely see it. See, I told you it's transparent. But it looks nice. more make another cross shape right here add some bigger ones I'm basically using my pencil as a brush at this point and now I just spilled a crazy ton of paint and drop my pencil. Please stop dripping everywhere. Now comes the hard part, which is taking off the tape. We start from where we finished. This was the piece I placed last, so I start from there. And I told you it was gonna leak. Very slowly. Normally I speed up my videos, but this is the actual real time speed I take off my tape. Okay, a bit more of tape bead to dry this one up. No worry, you can erase that. Everything is salvageable, everything is fixable. Don't worry, be happy. If that's one thing you're gonna take from this video, take that. So, carefully. And then the top. 
Oops. All right. If it gears up the white border, I'm fine with that. I just don't want to tear up my painting because it's sort of nice. Alrighty then. I'm quickly going to erase uh, this one. Just be careful and make sure it's dry if you're gonna erase this, otherwise you are gonna tear up the paper. <sighs> Alrighty then. Well, special thank you to my Patreons for the month of July. If you would like to find digital downloads to my traceable files for my more complex paintings or digital downloads for digital prints, uh, you can find me at Sunshine Arts. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know by commenting, liking, subscribing if you have not already. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next video.